Well, ahead of Singapore's guidelines, let's have a look at different types of flexible work arrangements, otherwise known as FWAs, in other countries. Now, the one that's most familiar to many is teleworking. That's where people can, uh, from the office, they can work from the office a few days a week. Here in Singapore, this is commonly known as work from home. It gained prominence both here and internationally during the pandemic. A survey by job search platform Indeed last year revealed that nearly half of employers in Singapore allow for some form of hybrid arrangement. FWA is beyond just working from home, though. Some countries have embraced the idea of a compressed work week. Now, this means completing the standard 40-hour, five-day work week in four days. Belgium became the first European country to legislate this for workers who want to do so in 2022. All government employees in the UAE can also legally choose to do so since July of 2023. And there are also countries allowing flexible working hours. Finland first passed the Working Hours Act in 1996, which gave some staff, staff rather, the right to start and finish three hours earlier or later than their usual time. And in the United Kingdom, employees will soon be able to request things such as the hours that they work and when they start or finish work. That is from April this year. Well, to discuss more about flexible work arrangements, we're joined by Yo Wan Ling, NTUC Assistant Secretary General and Director of USME and U Women and Family, and Dr. Brandon Cole, Lecturer for Human Resource Management Program at SUSS. Thanks so much for joining us this evening. Let's start with you, Dr. Cole. Now, we just heard that uh, the Minister of State for Manpower saying it's critical that as more employees take on caregiving roles. Uh, but we're asking for flexible work arrangements, not just for caregivers, but also for non-caregivers. First, how would we define as a category what's a caregiver, what is not? And what kind of arrangements will be made differently for these two different types or I suppose two ends of a spectrum? Mm, thank you for having me. I think uh, for flexible work arrangement to succeed, it's very important to um, tailor them to individual needs and analyze what they are first. So I do think that caregivers and non-caregivers will likely have different needs. However, we cannot just use them as discrete categories to assume that all caregivers and all non-caregivers are going to have similar needs. So an individual analysis is going to be likely. Uh, uh, Ms. Yeo Dawn here. Tell us what policymakers and companies perhaps can do in what is a, a complex environment here. They need to ensure that non-caregivers are also not sidelined. Yes, obviously. Thanks, Don. Uh, and thanks for having me. Uh, well, you know, we do think that flexible work arrangements, uh, a large group who would benefit from this would be caregivers. But we also know at the same time that, you know, um, being flexible at work, having different types of work arrangements is something that a lot of younger workers are also looking forward to. It could be that they are looking at, you know, side gigs. They could be uh, looking at studying at the same time uh, as working. And because of this, we do think that flexible work arrangements would also benefit non-caregivers. Now, having said this, it is important that uh, within the company culture itself, we're looking at building up a culture of trust and what is this culture of trust? Number one, it is ensuring that when it comes to um, assignment or when it comes to consideration of the flexible work arrangement request, companies actually have a fair way of assessing this um, with various types of um, workers, whether or not they're caregivers, whether or not they're people who actually just want flexible time. Um, and also the next uh, thing is actually to ensure that there's proper uh, performance appraisals um, systems that are set up uh, for um, our workers when it comes to them uh, looking at flexible work. All right, uh, uh, back to you, Dr. Ko. Uh, I think you mentioned it would not be prudent to consider discrete categories of caregivers, non-caregivers, even amongst caregivers. There are very many different degrees of giving care to different categories of people. Uh, how would you be organising 
as Miss Yeo just mentioned as well, how do you appraise them given that you are perhaps expecting slightly less from them given their caregiving responsibilities? How are they rewarded, incentivized to do what the best that they can given these responsibilities? How, give me a specific example of how you would do this. You know, I, I believe that if management and supervisors are generally supportive, uh, suitable work arrangements can be discussed and implemented uh, pretty much on an individual level. Uh, as for a specific example, um, the Tripartite Alliance for uh, Fair and Progressive Employment Practices actually has a rather detailed website. It's a very thorough and useful website that can help uh, employers strategize and implement many of the work-life programs, including uh, flexible work arrangements. I generally also echo uh, Ms. Yeo's uh, point that, um, in fact, I would like to emphasize that uh, equitable performance standard and uh, fair appraisals would be the non-negotiable factor if your employees can get trust that um, regardless of whether I'm using flexible work arrangements or not, I will be evaluated fairly, I'll be given a fair amount of work. Um, if that can be achieved, I think a flexible work arrangement can be generally accommodating, but the uh, evaluation standards are the ones that um, have to be consistent and uh, rigid. Is that very difficult to achieve very quickly? Uh, it, it, it ha you have to be very, very thoughtful about it. Yes, it's usually quite difficult to achieve, but uh, not impossible. I think it's a good standard to work to uh, regardless. Mm. The other thing that's been rather challenging to achieve is to get more people young people to have to, to marry and have children in Singapore. It's a, a narrative that we've spoken about for some years now. Uh, so the focus on, on flexible work arrangements, has a lot of it has been on the ageing population. Do you think that it needs to be also extended to younger families as well to perhaps, and, and could it have an impact on whether they have children or more children? Amizio, that question to you. Yes, Don. Well, you, you know, caregiving actually goes many, many ways. You know, you caregive for your seniors, you caregive for the infirm at home, but also at the same time, a large population actually caregive for their young. So you're absolutely right. We do think that uh, flexible work arrangements will allow people to have more work-life harmony and therefore right, be able to balance uh, what they want to do at home with their work responsibilities as well as, you know, being able to progress in the workplace. But having said this, flexible work arrangements is one of many things that we can be looking at. You know, um, we're looking definitely at paternity leave, maternity leave, as well as child uh, childcare leave. I think these are all important factors um, if you take in totality. That's also another factor. Um, there are many uh, types of formal uh, alternatives to caregiving that young parents can be looking at and for that matter as well people who are looking after their senior loved ones so for instance the NTUC does have a very large um, group of uh, of child care centers and I must say that for many young families having good child care is actually um, peace of mind for them when um, they are when, when when they are looking to come back to work uh, beyond this as well you know there are also other uh, types of help that people can be looking at, for instance, um, train home care help. So taken in totality, flexible work arrangements with proper leave, uh, with proper and sufficient uh, type of uh, childcare leave, uh, as well as uh, an ecosystem behind our caregivers, uh, whether or not they're looking after seniors, the infirm or young, I think these taken totality would be important in uh, lifting our you know population stats our oh, thanks a lot for joining us this evening. Yo Wan Ling, NTC Assistant Secretary General, and Dr. Brandon Cole from SUSS. Thanks so much.